Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com Bringing you another fly time video and this ends my series on the Green Drake. Uh, I'm going to do a Green Drake parachute. I haven't done a parachute fly in quite a while. And um, this is the way I like to tie dry flies. I mainly tie them in parachutes because they tend to ride truer a lot easier. They won't roll over and you know go hook up on you or anything. So I tend to like to tie mine in a parachute because it'll lay easier on the water for me. And um, so that's my reasoning behind the parachute. Uh, also, right now in our area, the green drakes are just starting to hatch. Um, South Central Pennsylvania here, they're just happening right now. They're gonna be moving their way up through the state. So you got, you know, two weeks maybe to fish them here. And uh, if you travel north with them, uh, you know, maybe a month, but either way, you, it's happening right now get out there and fish it so here's the way I fish it I'm tying it on a size 10 and uh, I talk a little bit about it in the video but I'll go over it again with you right now I like to fish them small I like to start out small with them 10 is small for a green drake but it's also a size that's going to fish fit in the fish's mouth along with that a lot of times right now this time of year you're also getting your Lake K hills and um, some other flies that are similar to it that are smaller than the drake which a lot of times when you're out fishing the green drake hatch it's such a short hatch that the fish aren't actually keying on the green drakes there are a lot of times keying on something else and this will cover you on that grounds too so uh, I'm going to show you the way I like to tie it take it for what it's worth and have fun tying it so here you see it in the vise and then the material list to tie it let's get into tying it Okay hey guys, here you see the fly in the vise. Really cool parachute fly. And not that hard to tie. So let's get into tying it. For a hook, we are using a 1770 Daiichi. And um, just a standard size 10. You can go a little bit bigger. But I like the 10 because it's a nice all around size. It's not too big. Um, some of the smaller fish will fit it in their mouth a lot easier and I used to tie drakes a lot bigger and that was a common problem I had. I couldn't get it in the fish's mouth and just lost a lot of fish. So, cream 140 denier thread is the next thing we're going to put on there and then we're going to use some of these mayfly tails and I want to pick off about six or so of them. Six or eight, just a small little clump and you want to keep them straight so I gotta straighten up a couple here here we go okay now next thing we're gonna put these on and I want to go just about the length of the hook shank here I don't want real long tails and we're just gonna center them on top and wrap them back and don't wrap them too far around the bend or you'll see they'll lay over like that. I don't want that. One way you can combat that is put a wrap underneath it. Okay, and then just wrap this forward. And trim that off. Now, you can tie your, pull it down tight and it'll splay it a little bit like that you see. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is split the fibers on the tail here. And to do that, I'm going to take a different colored piece of thread. And I'm just going to wrap it around the hook one time. Then I'm going to take and push these fibers up with my fingers and take my scissors to separate them and split them in half. Once I get them split in half, then I'm going to bring that thread up between the two. Lay it down over the top. And wrap it down. Now I made that one look kind of easy. Some of them are easier than others. Um, there you can see that splayed the tail really nice. And I don't have too many fibers out of place. Got kind of one that's hanging a little lower than I like. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some solarized bend dry. 
Just put a little dab in between there, pull those fibers tight, and lock them right into place. And there you can see, got nice split tails there. So that's a nice way to make a nice, quick, easy way to make a split tail on a mayfly. So we're just going to wrap this back. Next thing I'm going to do is put on my post. For my post, I'm using two colors of Antron. The two colors I'm using are fluorescent green and olive. The reason for the fluorescent green is if you fish the sulfur, or sorry, if you fish the green drake hatch, you know that it's mainly an evening hatch. And uh, it's a little nicer to have something a little brighter that you can see better. So I'm going to put some fluorescent green on there. Oops. I'm going to wrap it down in the middle as you saw and then make a couple wraps on each side. Then, this is the tough part. This is the one that takes a little practice to get onto. Uh, and my thread is wound up. So I'm just going to give this a counterclockwise wind. That'll help. Because it was too, too wound up, it was just trying to pull itself around there. Now I'm going to wrap this around the post. And I'm going to create a post here. And this is what takes some playing and experimenting. If you haven't done this before, it can be a little nerve-wracking. But just stick with it and you'll get it. And you see there, I built up a post. Oh, uh, maybe an eighth of an inch long. You can see how I got the thread built up to about right there. So, that's good. I like that. Now, I'm going to take and I'm going to build my body. And for the body of this... What I'm going to start out with, I'm going to put a rib on this. If you have green embroidery thread, that is what I used to use for a long time and would suggest. I have some green floss, so I'm, and it's on a spool, so I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to put, even if you have like a heavy, like a 210 denier, green would work great. Something just a hair bigger than normal to give you a rib on this fly. Okay, now for the dubbing, I'm using some Nature Spirit Extremely Fine Natural Dubbing, and this is Sulfur Yellow, but Sulfur Yellow, Pale Yellow, either one of those will work. And we're just going to dub a body up to that parachute. Okay, so we want to keep this extremely fine, like the dubbing is called. And uh, we're just going to build a body up here. We're not making a giant green drake here. Remember, we want one that the fish are going to feel comfortable taking. And uh, you're going to catch fish and you're going to hook and land fish when you do it. So that's the reason I like to fish the size 10. I, I land a lot more fish on it. And uh, I just feel comfortable, more comfortable fishing it. So I'm going to build up just a hair. Just slightly, not much though. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to wrap my rib up through here. I like, like I said, I like to put it on a spool and so I can just wind it right up there like that. Then we're just going to, if I put it on the spool, I can bring it up here and whip finish it off. Which is an easy way to do it rather than wrapping it down. Okay, now I'm just going to tighten up this dub that I have on here. There we go. And now we need to add our wing to this. For the wing, I am taking a long time ago, I took a whole bunch of grizzly feathers and dyed them in some Kool-Aid. Dyed these in a like a green color, lime green colored Kool-Aid. So I have a whole big bag of these for now. I just plucked them off of my grizzly cape. And uh, here you can see an old grizzly cape I have a long time ago. Plucked a whole bunch of feathers out of it and dyed them for this reason. Now you can see I have these nice green colored dyed grizzly feathers. Another way you can do it, take a green sharpie. Okay, I was I was doing this for a while too until I remembered I had those green saddle feathers or cape feathers. Anyhow, we're gonna start by taking the feathers. Taking a feather, here's your tip end. I'm going to go back in here to where the size 10 is, size 10, size 12 is. And I'm going to peel these back and get these out of the way. And I'm going to cut it off. And I'm going to tie it in by the butt end. You know, a lot of times I tie in by the tip end, but this time I tie by the butt end. 
And when I tie it down, I'm going to tie it down with the bottom side of the feather facing me. And I'm going to wrap it on the hook. And then I'm going to stand it up. Whoops, missed it there. I'm going to wrap it on by the eye. Oops, there we go. Wrap it on by the eye, get it tight. And then I'm going to turn it on that post. And I'm going to wrap it up that post. And make it part of the post. Wrap it right up to where I tied that other one at. And then I'm going to wrap back down. And then I'm going to lay my... You see how I just kind of... I brought the thread back towards me and laid it down over on my side. Now I'm going to take this feather and I'm just going to wrap it around that post. I'm going to work my way down the post towards the body of the fly. And once I get down to the body of the fly, now you remember I left this hanging on my side, which is where the feather is at. So I'm going to go over that feather. And this is where having a rotary vise comes in handy. I turn it this way so I can see it better. But I'll try to do it this way where you can see. Okay, I go over the hook, eye, over the feather, over the body, and then I'll come down so I make sure I don't trap any feathers on the other side. And I just keep doing that about five or six times. This way I keep all my feathers on top, all my fibers on top. And then the way I like to finish it is I like to take a pen and just do a half hitch. And I'll do like a double half hitch. And I'll do about four or five of those on there. And four or five of those is going to be equivalent to a good whip finish. Especially if you double them. And then trim your thread off. By doing it that way, I keep my fibers out of the way. Okay, now I, you see I still have my feather hanging down here. So I'm going to trim that off. And do it on your side here so you can see. Just going to go in and trim that tight. And make sure you can see I don't have any fibers there, I do have one. So I'm just going to try to clean that up. And now I don't have any fibers that's going to hold me up here on stand, the way my fish fly rides on the water. Last thing we're going to do, we're going to come in and trim the post to length. I like to trim that about a quarter of an inch. Oops. Nah, that's a hair longer than I like it. I might trim that just a hair more. I like to trim it and then take and just kind of fluff it out a little bit. And there you go. There you have a parachute green drake. Put that tail up there where it needs to be. Straighten them up a little bit. You got a nice parachute green drake. Hope you like it, guys. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, like I said, this is the way I like it. The size I like it. You can tie it a little bit bigger. But... It's harder, the fish tend to short strike it. A lot of smaller fish you're not going to catch because they're going to go up and grab it and just try to pull it under and drown it. And you're going to pull it out of their mouth when you see that. And actually they're not hitting, they're not hitting the hook part of the fly. They're hitting some other part of the fly. That's the reason why I got away from the fishing extended bodies and things like that. I, my hook sets were horrible because... I fish a lot of wild trout streams and the smaller fish just couldn't fit the fly in their mouth. They were pulling it under, but they weren't, they were pulling the fly under, but not the hook part. So by going smaller, you're not hurting yourself. I always preach downsize. If you do anything, go smaller in any fly. You always downsize on your flies and uh, you'll be a lot more productive and catch a lot more fish. So hope you liked it guys. I hope you liked the Green Drake series. Uh, showing you three different ways to tie it there. It's been a lot of fun and a lot of fun to experiment with things. This is the way I always tied mine. So hope you like that. And don't forget, um, it's not hard to dye. Got to mess around a little bit. A little bit of Kool-Aid in the bag there. And I dyed these green. They look great. Also, if you don't want to mess around with the Kool-Aid, I just use a green Sharpie. Now, I will say, if you're going to use a Sharpie, take and color them all. Set them aside for a night. Prepare them ahead of time 
because what happens is, is it's going to rub off on your fingers a little bit and it's going to rub onto your dubbing. If you do it all at the same time, you're going to rub right onto your dubbing and you're going to change this pale yellow color especially. It's going to bleed right into it and uh, it'll show right through. So that's just a little tip for you there. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe to it, please. And uh, leave a comment if you want. And, uh, you know, I like to try to get back to all of the comments I can. So thanks for watching, guys. Until next week when I bring you another video. I'm Sean Holsinger.